Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to uh, kind of tell you about what's happening here in Missoula and around the Missoula County area, and also talk about some news that are happening around the world that may affect the city of Missoula and Montana in general. So um, I got a lot of guests. I got uh, um, Owen uh, Orivik. Um, he is an Irish performer, a uh, pipe maker, and musician. And I also have Claire Leonard from the UM Irish Studies Education Outreach. Uh, they're going to be on here later in the show. And also I have a special guest, a kind of a blast from the Wake Up Missoula past on here as well. But uh, I also have news. I got some fun uh, programs. I got some videos and all sorts of wonderful things happening for you guys today for Wake Up Missoula. Let's kick things off with... A little bit of weather. It's warming up, and we can expect seeing those 50 degree temperatures starting next week. Um, today it's going to be 37. It's going to be a high of 44. Your low is going to be 23. It's going to have a high chance of rain and snow mixtures. Um, Saturday, you can have patchy fogs, and it's going to be sunny. The fog is going to rain in all the sunshine and mostly clear skies happening throughout this weekend. Um, going into Monday with a high of 55 degrees. So we're going to see quite a 10, 15 degree jump from just the past week or so. So expect the warmer temperatures to be happening in those days as well. All right, so let's talk about some news that are happening here in Missoula. Two University of Montana students have been arrested in connection with a shooting of two people in Missoula convenience store earlier this week. Um, Ivory Br Bryant, 19, was booked into the Missoula County Jail shortly before 3 a.m. Thursday on a count of attempted deliberate homicide. Bryant will not make a court will make it a court appearance this morning. Um, 18-year-old uh, Chase Munson, who also was at the scene. Uh, who University Show is a student along with Brian went to the convenience store around 3:45. Um, f sorry, there's a contradiction between booked at 3 a.m. versus 3:45 a.m. where they shot an employee and a customer. The employee was released, and the uh, cu uh, and the customer's condition, who was also shot, is um, unknown at this time. In Montana, the Montana Department of Environmental Quality says it needs more time to require by the law to analyze a proposed copper mine near the White Sulphur Springs. So White Sulphur Springs. Um, since 2011, D DEQ has undertaken four permits, two of which are related to existing mines, and the time frame was met. Two permits for new mines ran nearly twice as long, with uh, evolving analysis and hydro hydrology a major factor and a duty to consider issues with uh, socioeconomic and transportation. Supporters tout the mine as an economic boom that will modern mining practices can protect the environment as well. Critics have organized opposition to the mine as a landmark issue, citing its location in the Smith River watershed and questioning the impacts on um, to the iconic waterway. In national news, since the Columbia shooting nearly 20 years ago, the conversation of mass shootings have inevitably included media that depicts violence and its effects on children. While Democrats focus on gun restriction, conservatives often home hone in on music and video games. From Marilyn Manson to Grand Theft Auto, there are sometimes enigmas to parents. Um, this reported by NPR, Trump had reps from both video game companies and folks who believe wholeheartedly that games are the case of violence among youth. Trump has a brother who actually works for the gaming companies um, that makes such violent games such as Fallout, Elder Scrolls, and Doom, those popular uh, violent video games. Um, on one hand, the American uh, Psychological Association found a link between gamers and real-life aggression. Uh, the Supreme Court in 2011 struck down a California law that banned the sale of violent video games to children on First Amendment grounds. Um, Justice uh, Scalelli uh, wrote that um, that the, stud uh, the studies that the state used to as evidence did not prove that violent video games caused minors to act aggressively, and said the research was based on correlation. So the whole idea of this is like oh, th this person is extremely violent and they assaulted somebody and they also play video games. That's kind of like, that's what they kind of meant or in terms of that. So basically, I'm sure many folks are looking to uh, for a conduit to avoid gun re regulation discussion that has been avoided since video games have been used as a source uh, to be pointed at in terms of uh, causing this sort of violence. So this is one of those things that are constantly, constantly uh, argued about, but most of the time it's, the argument is pretty clear um, on on both sides, but then things kind of go off the rails when you start talking about violent video games and media because it goes into that same circle again because if there's not a certain thing to talk about, they talk about something else, and then everyone gets distracted, and then, unfortunately, nobody cares anymore. So <sighs> that's the news. <laughs> a little heavy-handed uh, this morning, but I have a couple... Uh, 
new art clips for you guys. This is an art clip from the Gallery of the Visual Arts. And then when I come back, I'll have my two guests here to talk about their performance today and tomorrow at the university at, at, and, at, and in Butte. So stay with me. Hey guys, we're back here with Claire and Owen, and you guys are here to talk about a uh, performance that's happening tonight and tomorrow night, first in Butte, then in Missoula's Music Recital Hall. And this is part of a month-long uh, celebration of the Irish culture here in Missoula. That's right. So let's talk a little bit about this. What can people expect from these concerts? Well, they can expect some very established and well-recognized Irish musicians that are the top of their game. They really are well known. And um, we're delighted because at the UM Irish Studies program, we bring in as part of the curriculum um, really good musicians. And we offered to our community and to the students at the university who are doing Irish Studies. And then we couple that with taking them into the communities of Missoula and Butte to perform locally. And we also had a master class mm -hmm. over at Hellgate High School yesterday morning with Owen O'Reavik, who oh. is a piper, an Illin piper, and a pipe maker. Oh. What is a, what is a piper? A piper. Um, a piper is, I suppose, by definition, a fellow who plays pipes. Um, I play an Irish pipe, which is called an Illin pipe. It's called Illin because Illin is the Irish for an elbow. Oh. So you pump, you pump these pipes rather than blow them like the Scottish pipes. So um, other than that, a piper is generally speaking, an ordinary kind of a person, really. Cool. Yeah. So, didn't they used to make the, uh, the, the sacks where you put the air in um, out of a uh, sheep's stomach or something like that? Yeah, the bag rather than the billows. Yeah, the bag where the, where the, the air is stored for supplying the, the rest of the, the mm -hmm. pipe. Yeah, that's, that was used to, it used to be pigs bladders and stuff wow. like that, yeah, yeah. And now it's, it kind of seems like every time I see it, it's like really velvet, very, uh, very pretty. Yeah, it went through a period where, where the, the, um, the covers for the, both the billows and, and the um, bag were covered in, in, in kind of um, velvet and, and trims and stuff like that, generally in, in green to promote the Irish thing, you know. Yeah. But that can't seem to stop again. It was, it, it generally now people just expose the leather, you know, just leave the, the leather showing. Cool. And um, so Claire, you um, you with Treylock, along with the Irish Studies program, um, you do this every two years. That's correct. And this is a way for you guys to uh, basically uh, conserve funding so you guys can bring musicians from Ireland yes. um, to perform for this basically the whole month of March, it seems like. We're so blessed because to have musicians of this caliber is, I mean, these are world renowned in their field. It's traditional Irish music and it's, it's, uh, it's so deeply embedded in Irish culture and it's handed from one generation to the next. When we had Danny O'Mahony here, he was talking about the music men and, and how there were certain people in the villages and towns of Ireland that were recognised and, and that was their field. And it goes and it's given from father to son to grandson and it's a beautiful thing. And this is part of what 
we're trying to focus on. We're doing a lot with Irish culture, but it's so nice to be able to say, we're bringing this over, it's something unique, and we're sharing it with the community, and hoping that that will encourage people to look at these studies and see that there's, it's not just history or, you know, literature or Irish dance and, and Irish language, there's the musical and social component to it as well. So they're constantly learning and then they go back to Ireland and they see and experience it in the home country. And it's a fantastic exchange of talent and skill. So is this your first time here in Missoula? No, I've been here before. I, I was here in 2011, I think, on the same program. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, was that the, so this is your, how many times have you been to Missoula? Well, Missoula, twice. This is my second time. Wow, what do you think? Yeah, oh, it's fabulous. I just love Montana, you know. I've been around all over the States through the years, but Montana has a, a special special place in my heart. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people really like the kind of like being nestled in the mountains. There's, it's like it's open fabulous, space, yeah. but at the same time you feel like you're protected by yeah. all the mountains around. Yeah, yeah, and the people are great here. I mean, yeah. I love the people there as well. You know. Yeah. And uh, Butte, it's always that's, that's such a big place for Irish culture as well yeah, because yeah. They're, the Irish um, um, St. Patrick's Day in Butte is renowned in Montana for sure. In Butte, of all places, <laughs> and uh, Butte, it, it, like I've I've known people who go to Butte all the time for the St. Patrick's Day, and of course this these events are kind of like leading up to it, but also it doesn't just end after St. Patrick uh, after St. Patrick's Day. You also have other events as well that you also want to bring some more people on later as well? Yes, yes. We have um, another concert coming up on the 23rd in Butte and the 24th, and it will be at 7.30 p.m. Again, it's at the, in Butte, the Montana Tech Library Auditorium, and in Missoula, the UM Recital Hall. And it'll be another famous musician, Liam Wainley, who would be a traditional, but also contemporary. Um, would have competed in Ireland in his teens and plays Bowron, Tin mm. Whistle, uh, piano and sings Shan Nos and, and contemporary stuff. So he's a, a great, wonderful person. So we're very happy to be welcoming him and that will finish then the UM Springtime Music Series for cool. this year. But of course, tonight, tomorrow night, you're performing. Mm -hmm. Are you excited? Are you ready? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Look, we look forward to it. How long um, are these programs? Um, I think about an hour and a half. That's right. Each one, yeah. yeah. Are you doing it all by yourself? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I came over on my own um, in 2011 thinking I was doing it on my, my own, but I met a guy called Eric Hutchins who is a, a local music teacher oh. here. He's a great musician and really catches on really quickly to the music and stuff. So we did a few gigs together last time and he's going to be with me this, this year as well. All right, so you guys can check him out um, in Butte at the library um, auditorium at the uh, Montana Tech College, um, 7.30 to 9 tonight. Uh -huh. And then of course, if you want to go to Butte and you want to stay in Missoula, tomorrow night at the UM Recital Hall from 7.30 to 9 p.m. Yes, and I'd like to thank a couple of people because yeah. this is a program that's uh, very much community-based and community-supported. So we have the Friends of Irish Studies in the West who have always been uh, kind of spearheading this activity. And then we also have the uh, Fulbright Commission who helped to send Irish scholars to us to teach Irish language. And we have the consulate over in San Francisco that's been instrumental. Um, so we're very grateful to all of these um, institutions for helping us out and the people of Missoula for coming out and supporting and please come to the concerts. Also, there's a bunch of stuff happening on St. Patrick's Day. Right. Come out, come downtown, you know, see the parade, uh, do the carousel rides, which are free. Come and taste whiskey at the Rhino Bar. And, okay. you know, we have to do <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah. You will not regret it. And come to the banquet. We have a gathering of Irish and Irish American folk. We'll have Irish dance, Irish music, Irish students, and we'll have great food and fun. Great. So it'll be a feast. So please come out for Owen and come out for St. Patrick's Day and then also for Liam. All right. Well, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. And you guys can check these guys out. Um, there's a recital happening tonight and tomorrow night. 
two weeks from today. St. Patrick's Day is next weekend, so there's definitely a lot going on in terms of Irishness. And if you want any tickets, try friendsofirishstudies.com online. Mm -hmm. There's Rock and Rudy's. We love Rock and Rudy's. We have in Butte then Granite Mountain Bank and the Kavanaugh County Celtic will sell tickets as well. And at the door, don't not come because you don't have the ticket. Come, yep. just come. Come yep. out and support it. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Spring break is just around the corner. While some of you get to go on vacation, MCAT lets your kids get away from reality to join us March 26th through the 30th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. for only $150. Kids will create and share their own works of media arts ranging from reality to fantasy. Kids will learn how to shoot, edit, record voiceovers, and make their stories come to life. How do kids play with these things? Find out more by logging on to MCAT.org and clicking on our Spring Flicks Camp to sign up. You have fallen down. Take my hand in friendship. and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm doing a quick little interview from a blast from the past. Uh, Josh Schmenny is on the other line via uh, FaceTime chat. So let's take a look. Hey, Josh, how's it going? Hey, everyone. Uh, it's going well. I'm here in the newsroom this morning. I'm about to start work. Uh, yeah, down here in uh, Lafayette, Louisiana. Cool. Former uh, MCAT employee, or I guess it's, what is it, Missoula Community Resource now? Yeah, something like that. Missoula, Missoula, It'll change in the next yeah. year, or so who? You know, so I'm not gonna. Do, it's probably better not just to put too much of a label on it so far. Okay, well, <laughs> former employee of the uh, Missoula Community Government Access uh, Operation. Right, you're at, you're in now. So, uh, well, how do you like it down in Louisiana so far? Uh, it's it's pretty good. Uh, the winter has been uh, very mild. Uh, it's been cold for louisiana but it, i barely noticed it cold at all um there were a couple cold snaps down here where it got down into the 20s or something and there was like at one point there was like an inch and a half of snow but i mean it you know compared to montana or uh north dakota it's you know yeah the weather is extremely mild um but yeah there's a lot of a uh, lot of interesting uh, news going on down here, you know, there's a huge oil and gas industry, there's, um, you know, more diversity in the population, there's a higher population, there's, um, you know, there's bigger cities like New Orleans and, and Baton Rouge and Lafayette's a, a fairly large city itself, and uh, yeah, it's interesting, for oh. sure. No mountains, though, no mountains. Uh, here's an interesting uh, tidbit about... Um, um, New Orleans is that uh, apparently I was watching a city council meeting here in Missoula and Butte has just as many historic um, buildings. Um, it's just barely less than the amount of New Orleans on the historic documents. And I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I, I mean, I I believe it. Butte's, Butte's really cool. I mean, Anthony <laughs> Bourdain went there and it's, you know, I think he called it like the Detroit of Montana or something because it's just like, I mean, not, yeah, yeah. not in like I, a derogatory I, I, hey. way, but like in the fact that it was like this big industrial city at one point, and then all these people left, but uh, but the the skeleton of the right. city is still there. So. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, um, just kind of mapping your career, you kind of started at uh, KPAX as a camera guy for a little while, and then you got part time as a reporter, and then you got another nonprofit, um, uh, actually a public access job in, in Bismarck, North Dakota. And um, I believed. Were you there during the uh, Keystone XL pipeline uh, while you were? I uh, wasn't. At wasn't the Keystone uh, close? It was the Dakota Access pipeline. Right. Um, yeah, I was there during the 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 protest, the water protector camp. Uh, yeah, I was able to go shoot a, some video and give it to MSNBC and Democracy Now. Get video for another documentary that's being worked on now. Um, I have video archived in uh, my own drives. But yeah, I, I was fortunate to be in uh, Bismarck, North Dakota during that event, which was happening pretty nearby, like like 80 miles away from Bismarck, yeah. And I was working at, you know, like the equivalent to Missoula Community Access 
uh, right. television there in Bismarck called Dakota Media Access. Yeah. Yep. And then I guess your next job was, um, of course, Great Falls, Montana, when you got a, a full time reporter gig. And that's something you've yep. always kind of wanted to do. You've always wanted to be that reporter. And this is now your kind of like your second kind of like full time job down in Lafayette. Yep, yep. So this is um, so uh, at KRTV. I was a full-time reporter, multimedia journalist. You, yes, you're right. I've always wanted to do that. That was huge for me. Um, KTC down here in Lafayette is a sister company of KRTV. They're owned by the same media conglomerate, right. Cordillera Communications. Um, I got an email from the news director down here that saying they saw my reel uh, on YouTube and were interested. And uh, long story short, I you know I applied for the job and I was dr driving down here, yeah. Yeah, you, you took quite a drive and you, you also brought your cat. Um. <laughs> so um, what is the, what's your favorite part about uh, living in um, Louisiana? Uh, favorite part so far, um, Let's see here. I mean, yeah, I like that there's a lot of big stories, you know, big politics. Louisiana is uh, pretty notorious for its politi political scene, um, ranging back to the, the Huey P. Long days. Uh, anyway, Louisiana has a notorious, like, Chicago-style, like, political scene, which is pretty cutthroat. Um, but, I mean, yeah, the stories, I would say, so far is my favorite part. Um, just being able to like cover pretty pretty uh, high profile stories uh, on a fairly regular basis. Uh, so far, that's been my favorite part. Um, also, just you know, checking out like bookstores and uh, there's a lot of really good, really outstanding food down here, seafood um, that I haven't gotten to experience much of my life living in landlocked areas of the country. So uh, you know, just the job's been great. And then when I do have some time. Uh, outside of work, I like to just try to check out interesting restaurants and and stores and bookstores and stuff like that. Cool. Do you uh um do you find that uh, more stories come to you that you live in a bigger community, or do you really uh uh find yourself really trying to look for the story that you want to choose? Um, it seems like there's uh, more flexibility in finding stories that I want to do, you know, just the bigger the, the forum, right? I mean, it's just a bigger city. I mean, this designated market area in Lafayette has about like 400,000 viewers. So, um, you know, there's just a lot going on. Like Lafayette itself is, uh, again, a fairly large city. I think it has something like, I want to say 130,000 people in it. But, you know, the surrounding area... There's all these other major, not major, but fairly large cities just like, just really close by, like all over the place. So there's just all kinds of activity going on, all kinds of history. Just there's just so much going on that um, if you really keep your 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 radar up, uh, you can find interesting stories. I, I I gotta I gotta keep getting better at it and keep getting more ingrained right. in the community. But um, yeah, I, I would say that the larger the the stage, the larger the playing field, the the better ability you have it, one has as a journalist to uh, find stories that they really like and find interesting. Cool. So it seems like uh, you live in a great place uh, with a lot of rich history. And um, and what instead of history, what, what about the future? What does the future hold for for you, Josh? What do you really want to do? Like, do you want to kind of stay here for a little while? Maybe move on to a different market? Um, maybe get like a, a national uh, market? Maybe CNN or blah 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 that kind of thing. I'm not. I'm, I don't want to like like generalize what you want what you want to do. Maybe cush your anchor job. I don't know. What what is the future for you? Well, you know, as I am in the newsroom here, I don't want to get too right in detail about next next moves yeah so i mean um i you know my thing is i just want to cover bigger stories all the time that right. are like more relevant and affect more people and you know i really like environmental stuff i really like economics i, I i've always been interested in like conflict reporting if that's ever going to be a possibility so right now just taking it one day at a time just trying i'm still learning learning the rhythm here at a KTC. It's a much faster paced environment than the Montana television network stations were. So um, just taking it one day at a time, trying to trying to fit in with the, the routine they have here, getting everything done uh, on time and everything. So Right. How long have you been working there so far? 
Uh, I would let's see. Um, since November, I would say early right. November. Right. Yeah, I yeah. think. Yeah, I remember because you 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 did a a brief appearance on Missoula Live with Joel Baird, and you stopped by and everything. That was cool. Cool. Well, I have to right. run. Do you have any other questions for me? No, I mean, um, everything is perfectly fine around here. <laughs> um, MCAT's doing MCAT stuff. We're going to be moving into a library soon. That's our next big push is moving into like a, a nice library setting. So we're becoming more like educational government kind of branch and less of like um, kind of like the idea of what uh, like – D the public access has always been like, hey, come on down. You, we'll help you do your thing, but n less people come down. So we're just more like, okay, we'll do everything. That kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> more, I mean, uh, I think that's a cool how you're moving in with the library. Yeah. More of an educational component, I guess. I mean, well, it really depends. You know, you don't know what's going to happen in the future. That's always just kind of like one of those things. It's like you're you're here, and you're just like, oh, I'm I'm perfectly fine with what I'm doing right now. And then you move into the next thing, and it's just like, okay, now how am I going to adapt to this situation? Right, right, right. Cool. Well, good luck with that, and keep me posted. Yeah. Well, have a good rest of your day, and I hope that uh, your uh, your job in Lafayette brings you great fortune for your future as well. Awesome. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. All right. Bye. All, All right. right. So that was Josh Many. Got to give him some props. Um, thanks for uh, appearing on my show. But then again, I just want you guys to know that uh, you should like his uh, Facebook page, which is at Josh Many, K-A-T-C. It's his reporter page. Like his page. Get him more likes. Get him more recognition. Move up from Lafayette and go into New Orleans. So once again, thank you, Josh Many, for appearing on my our old morning show from back in the day. Josh Minney was on our morning show from 2015 and I believe maybe partially 2016 before he getting a reporter gig at KPAX and then moving on and moving up from beyond there. So more props to Josh Minney at Josh Minney K-A-T-C. So be sure to like his Facebook page and all that. Let's move on to the next topic, City Council. City Council, we're talking about all sorts of things. There's a lot of different things happening here. The big thing that's happening is that it's during the public safety and health meeting, and that has everything to do with vaping indoors. So the whole idea is that they're saying, okay, we're going to add vaping to the uh, idea of like smoking doors. You know, they're not supposed to smoke within 25 feet of buildings, which of course people don't do. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, you know, talking about people across the street of MCAT, you know, anyway, <laughs> but of course, the purpose of the Montana Clean Indoor Act is to provide smoke-free air with public buildings and workplaces. However, the act alone does not address the uh, infiltration of smoke from outside into the enclosed public places. City and county governments and the University of Montana have policies that restrict outdoor smoking on their property in an effort to prevent environmental tobacco smoke intrusion and to prevent non-smokers as they enter the buildings. Kayla from the uh, oh, okay, so this is Ellen Leahy from Missoula County Health Department um, talks about how they feel about ex certain exemptions to people who want to vape indo indoors rather than smoke. But this exemption is not proven to be, or this, this approach is not proven to truly bring the effect that some of us care about, which is to get people um, off of cigarettes. And in fact, there's a lot of vaping going on with very young children. We are not attempting to curtail that business. I know that there are parties that would like to, but in this ordinance, what we are trying to do is to protect the indoor air for anyone who breathes it. That includes employees. So that goes back to the whole business of being special. We went through this with bars and casinos, and for 10 years it took a long time to get to the point where the employees of those environments, that their breathing space and the people that walked in that space was protected. And that is the underlying intent here, is to protect the indoor breathing space for anyone that goes into that. All right, so that uh, was uh, El Nehi. And the next quote I got it was from, I believe it was Shannon from the health, de talk, uh, health department talks about exemptions. Oh, sorry. 
Never mind. <laughs> we already we already got exemptions talked about. So this is Keith Bowman, and he is a representative and part owner of the Vapor Juice Store here in the city of Missoula. And um, this is what he had to say uh, on the difference between vaping versus smoking. Definition where it says vaping or to vape means to smoke, like I was saying just a second ago. Vapor and smoke are two very different things. Smoke is caused by a combustion process from burning, and vapor has no combustion process and has uh, more in common with a cloud or steam. So to vape is not to smoke. Uh, the definitions of vaping liquids and vaping devices in this exemption are already uh, covered in Montana Legislature Senate Bill 66 uh, under vapor product, uh, which they kept trying. Um, oh, there's three bills. There's, uh, as I sent them all to you, you know. You got one more minute. Sorry, Keith. That's fine. Senate Bill 147, uh, 66, and SB 354. And every single one of those bills, they tried to make us a tobacco product. And yes, uh, this is the city council, and uh, you are different from uh, the state uh, uh, senators, but uh, they all, none of them chose to put us under tobacco product. So they can say whatever they want about all these uh, studies that show that uh, vapor product is this horrible, horrible thing. But when it comes down to it, it is not the same as cigarettes. It doesn't matter what you say, it's not. It's not even close. And anything that is in vapor has a minute minute, tiny little resemblance to cigarettes. So what you're doing by not allowing testing and by not allowing us to show our uh, customers how to properly use a device and basically putting them outside with smokers is you'd be basically putting vapors that are trying to quit smoking back out with the smokers. Back out, back into all the, all the health and all the uh, bad things that they talk about cigarettes which I don't need to go into because we already all know about all the harmful effects of cigarettes. All right, so that was Keith Bowman uh, speaking in favor of vaping. Um, so uh, if I can find my mouse, I'll go on to the next topic, which, of course, many members of the city council were not in favor of this exemption on vaping solely because this would open up a can of worms. Heather Harp does not like the idea of an exemption, and this is what she had to say about this. And it's difficult in this role to um, always think of all the possibilities. And so at that public meeting, uh, I, I came into it with one viewpoint. And walking out of last week's public meeting, I had a completely different side of the story. And I think that's um, very important. And when it comes down to how I view my role, it's truly as a trustee, which means that I have to look down the road a very long distance. And so I believe that despite all the commentary and all the research I've done on my own too, that I think the unintended consequences of having an exemption would be devastating to the community over the long term. And so I will not be supporting the exemption. Thank you. Of course, uh, Heather Harp was not alone in this. Uh, many of the city council members were not in favor of this exemption. They move uh, to continue this topic in the next committee next week. Um, Public Works, the purchase price of water meters needed by the uh, Missoula Water are detailed on the attached price quote of $76,126. The sole source purchase is uh, appropriate because there is only one manufacturer for water meters that are um, capable of our existing inventory for supply and maintenance purposes. Therefore, Core and Maine has been designated as a sole source vendor for the reasons outlined in the attached memo. Uh, there's 400 new meters are going to be built, are, are going to be replaced and be put in to uh, Missoula's water company. So um, Dennis Bowman talks about implementing meters into the community. So here is um, Dennis Bowman. He is the uh, supervisor, uh, supervising manager at the Missoula Water. Question has to have a water meter. So when builders get done, we put the meter in. Um, if a flat rate customer that doesn't have a meter want to go on a metered service, um, these meters will also be used to be able to put on the customer's account. Um, and also then the current customers that have meters, that whether they're in the house or in pits, um, when they die, will use these meters to change them out. So they, they're, they're stored at our current facility on Broadway. All right, so basically what he's saying is that they're buying meters um, for the purpose of replacing old meters and so on and so forth. Uh, for, of course, anybody who does have a flat rate, you get to keep yours unless you decide to change it. 
you have to decide to change it, but you can always keep the flat rate. But this is a purchase. Is it anything new? Because they bought 800 uh, meters the other month. Uh, this is a buy meter based on demand, so the warranty is up to date when they install it. So the whole idea is um, if they need meters, they order meters, but they, as soon as they buy the meters, the meters go under warranty. So that's w one of the reasons why they have to keep on buying new ones rather than having like a whole bunch to have in storage for just in case reasons. But of course they have more than enough to have. But of course when Missoula bought the water company, over 800 meters have already failed and had to be replaced when Missoula uh, got on there. So here's Dennis Bowman, has a budget for the next five years and he talks about what uh, this, uh, their water company is gonna be doing uh, for the next couple of years with these purchases. Of what my assumption is of uh, meter periodics, what my assumption is of what the growth is going to be, and also what the what the 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 rate the percentage of flat rate customers coming over to meter, and it's just an assumption, you know, just from the history that I know. Mm -hmm. um, but what ties into that is when you try to do that, you look at the meters, the size of the meters. You just make an assumption that they're going to last 15 years. The battery is going to last 15 years. But like we're seeing, like some of these meters now, they're um, they're dying after six years, and and so that's why that's one reason why we're we're kind of over right now. Um, I have the manufacturer coming out next week um, to discuss the warranty issue in that with all these meters that we purchased. So all right, so uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's the. It's so far, uh, many of the projects that Missoula Water Company is reacting to failing systems that were inherited and also being dealt with as they come up. Um, Dennis will look into a more streamlined way of checking these meters in the future um, with new meters and new technology that allows people that allows the water company to be able to check these meters without actually having to physically go up to these meters. That we're looking into um, and the new meters and everything, we want it more fixed space. So I don't have to have somebody go around and read 23,000 meters or whatever. We'll get the reads every day. And then when we get the reads every day, that alarm will come in. That's the type of, of technology we'll say, okay, contact this customer. It, they have a leak. And they also have technology out there that if there's a leak, it's a solenoid operated valve, that you can operate it from our office and shut the water off. Yeah. Thank you. So you, the, the water company is very uh, old and archaic. One of the things uh, that they really want to try to do is update everything. There's, you know, like the biggest thing in the water company that uh, Missoula was um, complaining about when it was mountain water was the leakage, is there was a huge amount of water leakage. People were still getting their water. You know, people didn't really think about it. The whole idea is it's like, hey, as long as people got their water, we're fine. As long as the faucets still work, we're fine. The issue was is that uh, there's too much water uh, that was leaking from there, which would, which you know, eventually, um, if you think about it in terms of long-term effects, is that so much water would seep down, making our aquifer a lot weaker and less uh, protected in terms of just like you know, like you have the constant water flow. It's like imagine a hose um, going on your gr on your lawn and just never stopping, basically. Okay. Anyways, uh, the water company uh, looks a lot worse off now that. Uh, we have all the information about it, but things are looking better as Missoula can do something about fixing these problems. Of course, can't imagine um, going to 26,000 individual meters to check if there's a week, uh, if there's a leak, sorry. Okay, so anyways, that kind of sums it up for that. I got admin and finance as well coming up next, and they're talking about um, Homeward is buying a new property, but first they got to clean it up. So John Adams with Housing and Community Development, um, he's talking about uh, a site that's just behind uh, the new Missoula Food Bank. If you make a profit off of hazardous materials, you need to pay to clean it up. And that worked uh, really brilliantly in lots of ways and lots of places, but uh, it also had some unintended consequences, which were principally that people got scared of buying polluted properties because they were buying into the joint strict and several strict joint and several liability that came with CERCLA. Um, and then also that we had orphaned properties where there was no money to, there was no responsible party that you could force to clean up their own mess. And so in uh, the late 90s and then culminating in 2002, Congress passed the Brownfields Law, what's called the Brownfields Law, um, 
which was essentially trying to get at the heart of this problem, where you'd have derelict properties in the hearts of downtowns where industry had occurred that were polluted and that we didn't have any way to redevelop because nobody would take a chance on them or take on the potential financial burden of cleaning them up. So, so basically, um, this whole meeting is about uh, applying for grants and money to clean up this site so that uh, the organization Homeward can build a affordable living complex and avoid any kind of liability when it comes to environmental dangers as well. So um, the next part I want to talk about is that – here's a brief rundown. Um, um, basically, um, Missoula Food Bank had a property near it bought by Homeward where they want to create affordable housing. And here's John Adams again, kind of giving a, a background on Homeward and beyond. Uh, it's a straightforward cleanup. So one of the other ways that would benefit from the program, EPA provided a phase two for the property and evaluated the issues there. Um, there are some petroleum, arsenic, and copper problems. They're almost all near the surface of the soil. So the cleanup plan as it exists is that they'll dig up about 3,300 cubic yards of soil. It's safe to dispose of at the landfill. Test to make sure the soil is clear, backfill with clean dirt. And they'll work with the Montana Department of Environmental Quality to ensure protection of human health and the environment. So this is exactly the sort of project that we have the Brownfields program and the RLF for. All right, so that was uh, um James Adams once again. Um, the next person that – oh, John Adams, sorry. The, um, the next person that we, is we got Heather McMillan, and she's from Homeward, and she talks about the site uh, that is about the same uh, – about the size of an acre, and there isn't too much to clean up, uh, but it's uh, referred to as uh, the shark fin um, in terms of uh, the way it's shaped. The shark fin, as we are trying not to call it, has been a special little project of ours uh, working with the food bank. Uh, there are access issues uh, because there's one tiny little point of entrance. There's a ditch. There's environmental cleanup and a few other gems when it comes to development. But these uh, brownfield funds for cleanup are significant to us because if translated, if we were paying them and then having to recoup this in sales of homes, it would add over $12,000 a unit mm -hmm. to the house. And so for us to get to the point of affordability in which we're shooting for with our small um, homes project, uh, which we were previously awarded home funds for, uh, this is really helpful. And I also wanted to go on the record to say staff has been amazing, Anna and all people, John, uh, working through what I would say is probably one of the most complicated sites we've ever looked at. <laughs> it's uh, it's just got a little bit of everything. So uh, All right, so that was uh, Heather McMillan, um, who is with Homeward, and Homeward hopes to uh, build a, a affordable housing for people in the future. So, of course, if you want to find out more information about these meetings, I did a meeting on a little flyover between admin finance, uh, public works, and, of course, public safety and health. If you're interested in seeing any of those meetings and more, you go to ci.missoula.mt.us. If you're interested in finding out more about my show, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice to even made you write it out twice. You can also go to mcat.org to find out everything MCAT. Oh, that's that's convenient. Spring Flicks is happening um, during spring break between March 26th through the 30th. So if you have a kid between the ages of 9 and 13-ish, and I mean the ish because they could be 14, they could be 8. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but we are looking for kids age 9 to 14. Sorry about that, 14-ish. And if any kid wants to do some um, stop motion, do some live action stuff, just basically movie making. It's the whole idea. It's like a, a nice uh, seven-hour day, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., easy going, pretty sweet. Everything's chill. I'm chill. We're good. It's it's a nice chill camp for kids to create. Uh, we don't um, impede their creativity, but also we have some fun games and we have some virtual reality to kind of entice them to create as well because the kid who creates the most gets to play the most. And that's our motto right now. Anyway, <laughs> thanks. All right, that's that. Um, I do have um, some events for you guys as well, but I'm gonna, um, I, I wanna talk to you guys about the meaning of friendship. I'd rather, well, I'd rather show you the meaning of friendship. So here is a nice short film from our Saturday drop-ins, The Meaning of Friendship. Hi! Ah! Oh, you have fallen down. Take my hand in friendship. I didn't see you there for a second. 
Most people don't see me till the last second. So, what's your favorite color? Sky. Huh, my favorite color is red. But sky is a close second. Ah. You'd be surprised at how close it is. Oh, you should get some water. It is important to stay hydrated. I'm okay. You need to keep your body healthy. I really don't. and you make it up. Actually, I... Um, I... Accept my hand. Accept it. I don't accept it. Listen, I don't feel comfortable with our, like, friend relationship thing. <laughs> I tell you that these this this building is so not up to code. Did you hear? Some kid was like running down the stairs and he fell and he broke his neck, and killed him instantly. Wow, it sounds like he was real dumb. Yeah, but I don't know. Like I guess he was distraught for some reason. Maybe I don't know. You know how kids can be. Uh, they can be pretty cruel. I I can't imagine. I think we all learned something from that video, but you all can learn all about that by going on to my uh, YouTube channel, Wake Up Missoula. You can also follow, like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter, at Wake Up Missoula. Just Google Wake Up Missoula and you can find me. It's easy. And then I'm going to do another morning show called Morning Missoula, 
Maybe. I don't know. Who cares? Okay, so let's talk about some Friday events. It's time for events. Friday, starting this morning, uh, Mismo, Mi uh, Mismo Indoor Sports Arena, and Roots Acro Sports Center from 9 a.m. to about noonish today. They have all sorts of events happening all day, but these are for the kids, little kid events, and this is for gymnastics, tumbling, trampolines, foam pits, all sorts of fun, safe environment for kids to get um, physical. So, school's out, bug camp. Missoula and Zegatarium, so some of your kids might be out because it is uh, parent-teacher conferences for some of the elementary schools here. But of course, throughout the school year, public schools in Montana have conference and teachers' uh, professional days where students are out of class. Unfortunately, most working parents do not have these days off. Most of these days, Missoula and Zegatarium hosts schools out bug camps. It's happening today from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, for ages 5 to 11. And if you want more information, you can contact them at the MissoulaButterflyHouse.org. Of course, it might be a little too late for that, but it's also too late for this, too. MCT is hosting a play in a day starting at 9 a.m. For days off, MCT is day-long theater camp is a perfect place for your K-8 grader to star kiddo. Let me start that again. It's a perfect place for your K-8 star kiddo to spend the day. Students will rehearse a small musical and perform it the same day. And yes, you can come watch the performance play in a day um, is 9 a.m. to 5.45 p.m. The four runs takes place at 5.30 p.m. Uh, this theme is uh, a soap's antics. The play in a day is sponsored by the Animal Clinic of Missoula. Family story time and tiny tales starting at 10.30 a.m. Um, continue today is the high school state B championship 12 p.m. noon pretty much all day today. It's double elimination. So if your team lost the other day, today is their redemption day to come back. Family story time and tiny tales is going to be at the Missoula Public Library starting at 10.30 a.m. Kids, little kids from walking, birth to five years of age, get to enjoy the wonders of books as early as possible at the Missoula Public Library. Bridge and Cribbage at 12.30 at Missoula Senior Center. Um, you got family fun time at the Y. Um, I guess they just started posting on um, MissoulaEvents.net, so this is why I started talking about it. So uh, they believe family needs a place to play together. Family fun time at the Y, YMCA, Russell Street, right across from Despos, is a time for indoor all-weather play place where parents are welcome to join the fun. The program is free with your Y family membership. And of course, the $22 for a family without the membership. And it provides access to the entire Missoula Y facility if you do that. So it's offered um, September through May. And it's Tuesdays from 9 to 11, Thursdays from 9 to 11. And of course, Fridays from 3.30 to 5. So it's a nice little afternoon Friday just before you head on down to the Zach for three events that are happening that night as well. So the Zach Arts Community Center is welcoming the works of Carlene Kantner. The series of sculptures is a... Um, approach to hand building and blends uh, additional media and unique ambience for an immersive experience. Uh, the work is going to be at the Zach Main Gallery, and it's going to be open pretty much from 11 to 6 p.m. most days. They have a teacher showcase, and they, of course, tonight as well, they have free silk screening. So bring a blank shirt um, to look at some of this art, and you get to hang out and do it. Um, top hat, um, 6 to 9 p.m. So if you guys are um, hanging out with your kids and be like, I could really use a drink. Top Hat Family Friendly Friday is a way for you to bring your kids and a uh, thirsty uh, appetite um, to the Top Hat and just drink and have fun. And kids are allowed to just run around and be crazy. Don't touch the musical instruments. Um, 39 steps. And it doesn't take 39 steps to get to the Missoula Ch uh, Community Theater starting 7.30 p.m. So your kid is there all day, and then you're going to go back there again tonight to go to 39 steps, which is a, sh a show uh, – written for a movie and basically uh, remade twice and then put into a, into a play in his 1935's Alfred Hitchcock film, which is based on the 1915 spy novel, add in, uh, add in a murder mystery with just four actors playing 150 characters, and you get a madcap whodunit Monty Python-style comedy full of twists and turns. The 39th Step receives six Tony Award nominations in 2008 and has been produced in over 40 countries. And this is recommended for kids eight, uh, 13 and over, so uh, if you're a big kid, you can enjoy this as well. So that's about all for your Friday events. I have a nice little, uh, oh, no, I'm just going to skip that. Uh, <laughs> prune the Moon. Um, Missoula Moon Randolph Homestead, uh, they came on down to um, um, Missoula Live to talk about this, and it's a way for you guys to help the, the, the Missoula uh, Moon Randolph Homestead, which is uh, 43 acres of land that is owned by the city, which you also are take part in taking care of 
your own farm and own heritage of homesteading. And it's a good way just to uh, trim some trees, hang out, look out there. They will uh, have some, um, you get to learn to care for older apple trees. And a great way to spend the spring day with a historic homestead in Mo Montana. For those pruning equipment, bring hand saws, pole saws, loopers, hand shears, gloves, and orchard ladders. They will have plenty of tools for the empty-handed. And this event is free and open to the public because they're going to make you work. And coffee, lunch, and cider is provided. No sign-ups required. Just show up at Moon Randolph starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Kids Fair at the Southgate Mall is starting at 10 a.m. So if you want to go to the Kids Fair, it's 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and it's a good way just to basically have interactive education, informative with the whole family games, free crafts, demonstration, games, puzzle exhibits, and more. So it's a kid event happening there. Making insects instruments during the summer your kids can hear a nightly course of insect sounds. The singers, the grasshoppers, uh, katydids, and crickets are busy sending messages to the members of their own species. And then on Saturday from 12 to 2 p.m. at the Missoula Insectarium, you can learn all about that. But if you want to do some Saturday drop-ins from 1 to 5 p.m., MCAT hosts Saturday drop-ins for kids age 9-ish to 14-ish. Um, and I say ish because we always have some kids who are a little bit younger and some kids who are a little bit older, too. And they get to enjoy some um, stop animation. It's a drop-in live action it's a cool thing it's a, and it's a good little taste to see if a kid really likes it and also wants to do our spring ca camps as well which is happening March 26th to the 30th um, springtime of Irish music and song as you heard they were here on the show 7.30 p.m. at the University of Montana Recital Hall and that's uh, Owen uh, Orivik uh, good thing I actually have his uh, phonetic spelling on my little cheat sheet tickets are available at Rock and Rudy's and on through Friends of Irish Studies <coughs> And Sunday, yes, there is a Sunday event. It's UM Renaissance Fair. University of Montana is travel back in time and around the world with us and join us for the Spring Festival to help support the student groups. This is the University of Montana's first ever Renaissance Fair. Sunday, March 11th from 2 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. This is a student group fundraiser. They're asking for $5 per person or $15 per, per family. So if you have four members in the family, it's a steal. If you have three members of the family, it's pointless. Um, please pay at the door with cash. And I believe it's going to be at the UC Theater. I uh, know not the UC Center, so University Center Center for short. Uh, <laughs> you can enjoy all sorts of fun things happening this weekend. It lo looks like there's a lot of geared towards family and kids events happening all weekend long. But if you guys are planning on going out and about tonight as well, you got Stafford. Spaff, Spafford, Spafford at the Top Hat Lounge. It's going to be some jam rock music. Dead Hipster presents I Love the 90s, so if you like 90s music, uh, Limp Biscuit and John Wooing things, go to the Boundland. Um, you also VFW has a bunch of music as well. 406 is going to be country music at the Sunrise Saloon. Dusk is going to be at the Union Club, so it's a nice little dancing boogie band. Um, let's see, what else is happening for your Saturday night? Um, a lot of things happening. Um... Do, 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 do. Uh, DJ Music at Badlander, of course. Karaoke at VFW. Uh, 406 is still at the Sunrise Saloon. They usually play tw two nights. Um, the Shiver is going to be the Union Club. Mudside Charlie is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge. And that pretty much does it for all the events that you need to know what's going on in the city of Missoula. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I wish I would have. Oh, maybe I can just breeze through pre critic real quick. So, uh, if you like movies, why don't you go see Wrinkle in Time? So, the movie is about a girl who has to find a father, the whole concept of the idea is that, oh, well, you know, like you gotta get from point B to point C. Oh, why don't you just bend space time and pencil through it? Boom, there's your movie. Um, Gringo, uh, you know those stoner films? But now the stoners have grown up to become CEOs. Now this movie is about those CEO stoners who are trying to not pay a ransom. Woo, woo, woo. Uh, <laughs> and another movie. Uh, this is apparently a sequel to a movie that was made 10 years ago. Then they're just like, okay, we're going to make this movie. It's like, okay, sure, whatever. So the whole idea is it happens in a trailer park. And things happen. Just like a trailer park. And people are in it. People do things. Um, they try to survive because there's people in masks trying to kill them in a trailer park. So basically, like, living in a trailer park. Anyways... <laughs> <laughs> that about does it. I have a nice song for you guys. So without further ado, here's some wonderful music by your own Scott Ramph. <laughs> 